everyone. Welcome to the second episode this week of Weekly Hope. Um, I'm Kirsten Hagland. It's great to see you all. Thank you for signing on and joining us. And of course, I have my co-host with me, Elsa. She says hello to everyone. Uh, if you've been on here before, this is my, my toy poodle, and she likes to join us every once in a while. Um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. And if, if especially if it's your first time, why don't you um, leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know your name and where you're signing in from. Um, of course, we've got people who tune in every week. And so we just want to say thank you again so much for coming back. Um, at Weekly Hope, we try to bring in experts, clinicians, advocates, and people with recovery stories from the wide spectrum of the eating disorder recovery community to get their stories their insight, their wisdom, and also give you the opportunity to ask them questions. And so that's what we do here. That's what our episodes are all about. So of course, if you like what we're doing, if this is a good thing for you, um, please come back and check out the Eating Disorder Hope Facebook page every week. Um, and and we've got a different guest. So you know, let us, and also let us know what you want to hear. If there's a topic that you want to talk about, let us know, because this is a show for you and we want to make sure that your thoughts, your conversation, and you know the things that you're dealing with on a daily basis are a part of this show and what we do here. So that's a little primer on Weekly Hope and what we do. Um, and uh, are we ready to welcome our guest? I'm talking to my dog on Facebook Live. But <laughs> all good because she is she's my main girl. Um, so we are going to welcome our guest for this week. And I'm so, so excited because this one and also if you are a weekly viewer, then you know a couple weeks back we had some te technical difficulties and we were not able to get her on. So she graciously rescheduled and she's here to join us today. So we are excited to welcome Claire Misko and she is the CEO of the National Eating Disorders Association. And that's Nina. And we are excited to have her joining us from New York City, the Big Apple. Welcome, Claire, to the show. Thank you for having me, and uh, hello to you and Elsa. <laughs> She's the cutest. Can you see her? Can you yes, see her on your end? Yes, in frame. <laughs> I know, you know, and I know, and I understand fully that some people are dog people and some people are not, but for those who are, I always just like to bring her little joyous face into the picture so people can have some well, fun with that. I'm one of those dog people, so much appreciated. <laughs> Um, so I just have to tell a little story first before we hop into our first topic, and that's just that. Um, oh, Deborah uh, Schlesinger says hi, Claire, and hi, Kirsten. Hello, Deborah. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, so I just this really is special to me. One because I very very much admire you, um, and but also because Nita is very special to me because um, when I started to first share my story of recovery on a very 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 small scale. Um, I was so inspired by Nita, and it was the very first organization that I'd ever heard about that did anything related to eating disorders awareness. And, um, you know, it was the, the resource, um, and so far as a nonprofit organization that was, was talking about this illness. And so uh, I wanted to find a way to go to the conference. I wanted to get educated and meet up with people. So I signed up as a, as a volunteer and went to the conference in San Diego in 2007, I believe, and um, volunteered and it just blew me away. And it was the first time I'd ever experienced and been around so many other people who either had struggled and recovered in the same way that I had, or were working every day in the field as clinicians, as advocates, and it was it was huge in my my own journey. And so I just owe so much to where I am today to that first experience around Nita that it will always have such a very very special place in my heart. Um, so just want to say first of all, thank you to the organization for being a beacon of hope to so many. Oh, that is so wonderful to hear, and um, mutual admiration society, <laughs> because um, you, you've done so much to share your experience and um, bring people together in this community, and it's been such a pleasure working with you and getting to know you over the years, and um, this is fun to do this today um, across, across oceans, technology. 
Um, but yeah, Anita is really about, um, it's about building community. It's about bringing people together. Eating disorders can be incredibly isolating. Um, you know, I struggled myself with an eating disorder, which is how I came to this field, as many people who are in this field um, can relate to. And so it's really incredible to see um, how Nita has grown. You know, I've been in the field for 20 plus years and have seen the evolution of the organization. And um, it's, it's really special. Um, and it's, it's what I, our focus is really on families and people who are personally affected. Um, and connecting them also, as you mentioned, you know, there's an opportunity to connect with clinicians and researchers and, you know, people who are leading the field um, and thought leaders in the space. And so it's, 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 a, it's a very special organization and I feel very, very privileged um, to be in this role and to work with people that I do, including you. Yeah, you know? well, thank you so much. And you do, you're, you've done an incredible job so far. And we'll dive into... Nita's work in a moment because there's some really cool projects that you guys are working on at the moment. Um, but before we do, there's some current news uh, that mm -hmm. has um, really rocked the recovery community from eating disorders to addiction. And just wanted to to mention it. Oh, Sarah Rutterford says hello. Hey, great to see you back, Sarah. Um, and Terry, of course, Terry has been watching the last couple of weeks, and he's a male who struggled with anorexia for many years and he's back with us today. So, hey, Terry, thank you. Hello. Um, so, <laughs> um, so it was a huge news headline, I think yesterday or the night before, um, that Demi Lovato, the um, obviously ex extremely famous and, and well-known pop singer who has been a really vocal advocate about recovery and her own journey and struggle in many ways, um, was hospitalized for a drug overdose and of course there are a lot of details a ton of details that we do not know and a lot of people are quick to jump on the bandwagon to say x y or z but um i think it's just really really important to recognize two things one that there are thousands if not millions of people across the world that that relapse every day or overdose every day who are not featured in the news, whose stories deserve to be honored as well. Um, but also, Claire, I'd love to get your your take and your thoughts on this story and how we can respond to this story in a way that is helpful and not stigmatizing or does further damage. Sure. Sure. Well, well, certainly, certainly this news has, as you said, has touched the community. There's been a huge reaction from uh, the NIDA community about this, and um, we've seen an outpouring of uh, support for Demi. And as you mentioned, she's been so vocal and so authentic and honest about everything that she's been through along the way. And, you know, this is oftentimes part of of the path and um, it, you know eating disorders are um, there's a huge connection with other I issues including substance use and we know that we know that relapse is real um, so it's important that we use this moment um, you know certainly to express support um, what I've been very encouraged to see from um, the NIDA community is a, a sense of coming together around this. And we've seen we've seen people, you know, responding to our posts on social media, um, encouraging others and, you know, tagging others and saying, you know, it, it's a very important moment for us to be able to talk about the reality of recovery and, you know, also to um stress the importance of reaching out and um, the importance of a support system. So I think that this is a moment where we can certainly talk about what what recovery looks like and the fact that it's not a straight line, um, that there's you know often a long journey, but that with a support system and with a sense of community um, and with that, again, going back to what I was saying before about her, what people relate to, I think, about Demi's journey is that she's been so honest and open and authentic about what's been going on. So um, whatever we can do to use this moment as an opportunity to open conversation and to connect with each other, um, that's that's what I think can re be really positive about this. And um, 
you know, of, of course, we're all, um, all of us at Nita are sending our thoughts and um, best wishes to Demi and her family. You know, that's the other thing too, that, you know, family and friends are such an important piece of this. And um, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough road, but recovery is possible. And I, I want everyone um, watching this and, you know, watching this now live and, you know, in the future to um, really hold on to that sense of, of hope. And, you know, things, moments like this can lead us to question that. But when we come together, that's what's really important and support each other in that journey. Um, whether they're, you know, a, a setback doesn't mean that recovery isn't possible. So I would, I would say that's really what's been um, coming through to me in, in terms of the reactions from our community and the way I feel about it personally. I mean, I've relapsed in my recovery and you know it's 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 a tough thing to go through uh but as you get further along in the process you learn how to reach out in those moments and um i think that's something that we really all need to be talking about you know how do we handle that and the reality and then again the, the co-occurring piece is a really important point of discussion here um you know the the it's very rare to just struggle with an eating disorder and that's it. You know, there, there often um, are other issues going on and, you know, we all need to be talking about that as a community and supporting each other. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for those words. Super important. And yeah, one thing I, I agree, I've seen a lot of really wonderful support from people um, rather than condemnation. And I think that's probably everyone's worst fear. I mean, it was for me, as I'm sure it was for you, that if you relapse, if you backslide, if you you know mess up or whatever, that all of your support team are gonna leave you. You're a failure, you know, we mm -hmm. knew you weren't gonna be able to do it. But I think for people that are currently struggling to see the amount of support that has been shown, it shows them, okay, no, I can, I can do this and people aren't going to leave me and there is hope. So yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, and, and there's so much, I mean, perfectionism and, you know, a feeling that you're not doing it right and you're not doing it well enough, um, that you aren't good enough. You know, those are all, all the, the noise, the voices of the eating disorder. So, you know, it's important that we resist that and, and again, resist it together, which is what has been so encouraging to me in the reaction to this news, which is, it's tough. It's, it's tough for our community, but it's also an opportunity for us to come together. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And speaking of community, that's a perfect segue. Oh, just want to say, um, Deborah says, thank you for your advocacy and, and thank you um, for yours. <laughs> Um, and Lauren, hey Lauren, um, she says, so happy you're doing this, loving every second. So thank Aww. you. Um, Thanks, speaking of community, this is so, so cool. Um, you guys at Nita have teamed up with the body project and that's something you're really mm -hmm. passionate about right now. So tell us about this incredible program and of course, how people can find out more about how to get involved. Sure. Well, uh, as you mentioned, we have recently um, taken on the Body Project as the um, you know primary in the U.S. The primary partner, the Body Project, is a body confidence program. Um, it's backed by 20 years of research, and um, we are really excited to be rolling this program out. Uh, it's something that. I personally feel very passionately about because um, the, the whole idea of empowering young people um, with the tools to talk back, to understand the kinds of messages that are coming at us. You know, again, there's this onslaught of messages that are reinforcing um, the appearance ideal and whatever that looks like or whatever that, that, um, that ideal that you're striving for. Um, to be able to to actively resist that, and um, so if you are interested in this program, um, you can visit nationaleatingdisorders.org to find out more information. Um, we have trained uh, over 300 facilitators in this program uh, so far, and it's a train the trainer model. And we're also going to be rolling out a version of this program that um, is accept 
a shorter version of the program um, that's accessible more broadly. So I, I encourage all of you who are interested in this um, and interested in how we change the culture. Um, we have to change the cultural messages around body image. We have to move towards a more inclusive picture. Um, so again, eating disorders are very complex issues, um, very complex illnesses. It's not just the media causes eating disorders, but we know that um, there's an influence there. And there's also a real role of um, in the recovery space. We have to change the culture to make it more um, open for people to, to feel good about themselves and feel good about their bodies in recovery. So um, this is relevant for all of us who care about these issues and who have been affected by eating disorders and disordered eating. Um, and you know, certainly as a parent <laughs> of an eight-year-old, um, this is something that's very much on my radar. And how do we teach young people um, a more holistic and give them a more holistic picture of health and instill um, body confidence and body acceptance um, resist shaming, uh, resist the language and the messages that uh, would encourage us to uh, be, be um, exclusive in the way that we're looking at, um, at, at body image. So that's, that's really a personal driver for me now. What, what do you say to the critics? Because I know what I would say, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not your role. Um, what do you say to the people? Because I get this question a lot from people outside of the recovery world, and that's that, well, don't projects like this or ones that don't um, talk about acceptance, body acceptance, all of that. Well, you know, we don't want our kids to be fat or we mm. have an obesity crisis or, yeah. you know, that that whole that that the two can't can't coexist. Oh, you right. know, what, what do you say to, to those critics? Because we hear them a lot. Right. Well, what I would say, first of all, is shame is never a motivator for healthy behavior. Amen. We know that. The research says that. It's very, very clear. All kids deserve and all young people deserve to learn about health and what makes your body feel good. Um, what foods and exercise is, you know, building strength and it's, you know, fun and framing food and weight and body image and exercise in a way that is not linked to a number on a scale or is not based on this type of body is good and this type of food is bad. You know, this, the, all of the moralizing around food and weight is really damaging for all of us. Yes. So that that is my number one response. Um, we need as a culture to talk about health and health is such a loaded term these days and fraught. <laughs> yeah. um, and we've got to unpack that. We've got to unpack what we mean when we're talking about health because BMI and the number on a scale are not measures of health um, and we need we need to really understand that and I think particularly in the um, the eating disorders field and for those of us who care about these issues um, we know that there are people of all sizes who struggle with eating disorders and in order to recover we have to push for body diversity in media we have to push for an acceptance of the fact that there is a diversity of body types that exists naturally in the world. So that's very important to me personally. Um, I happen to, you know, live in a body that's, you know, a, a smaller size. Uh, but in my own recovery, I will say that um, being exposed to uh, messages around fat activism and health at every size was very powerful to me in my own recovery. And I think that that's true for a lot of people. And we have to really um, think about that as we uh, talk about 
the importance of body acceptance. Yeah, it's so good. Um, talk a little bit about how the Body Project has been received so far and what um, signs of success that you've seen already with your trainings, because you guys train the people mm -hmm. who will then give the course, right, to the students. Um, and you said it's backed yes. by 20 years of research. I mean, that's awesome. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this is a really um, exciting program. And again, it, it has a very solid um, research basis. and. We've uh, been training trainers and facilitators across the country to deliver this program. And one of the, we've seen a wonderful reaction from both the, the high schools and the community-based organizations that we've partnered with thus far. Um, we've also trained a number of our need and network organizations. We have a, a network of state and regional organizations all across the country who do um, outreach and work on the ground. Um, and a really important part of the NIDA community. And we have seen such a, a great reaction from um, both the young women who have participated in the program, and I will say we're also working on a version of this program for boys and young men. We recognize that um, certainly eating disorders and body image issues affect everyone, and we need this program for, for boys and men as well. Um, but the other piece that I've seen and is really compelling to me is that the facilitators themselves, often um, health teachers, guidance counselors in the schools, um, program coordinators at the organizations that we partner with, um, these are people who also benefit from the program. So going through this training has been uh, very eye-opening um, and people will talk to us about wow I never thought about the kinds of comments that I've made in front of young, the young people that I work with um, about my own weight about you know my own insecurities about my body um, comments that are so much a part of our culture and so accepted that it's an opportunity for people to to really examine that and say, wait a minute, this is having a negative impact on me and it's having a negative impact on the young people that I have an influence over. And that is so, I mean, talk about paying it forward and talk about the power of, of that kind of awareness. And, you know, again, it's pushing back against that, that cultural message and the idea that this is just, you know, unfortunately accepted, you know, it's, it's, it's so common, this kind of talk like, oh, I shouldn't have this dessert or, oh, I shouldn't, or this is bad or sinful or sinfully delicious, all of these kinds of messages yeah. that are around us all the time, but are actually quite toxic and contributing to a culture that, you know, promotes disordered eating thinking and disordered eating behaviors. Yeah. 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 It's so, I'm really, really excited about it too. And I love that it's evidence-based and, um, and focusing on prevention because, you know, there are obviously great organizations and, and treatment centers that, that provide, provide treatment, but I love that Nita is, is really focusing on prevention, right? Because mm -hmm. in, that's always the goal, right? Is to prevent rather than you know treat once once things really get serious or chronic. Um, and and speaking of the culture, which you mentioned, and we've been talking about quite a bit, and you've already mentioned the words inclusivity, mm -hmm. um, diversity of shapes and sizes. I think that that is something that is coming into the cultural consciousness so much more now in the last year or so, um, as it relates to ethnicity and background and um, race, obviously, gender, yeah. and um, the conversation around body shape and size is a part of that. Um, and even words like privilege being included mm -hmm. in the eating disorder, you know, community. Um, what, in your view, is the most, the way that we can make this conversation very beneficial to those maybe marginalized groups who, when we talk about eating disorders or the image most people have in their mind of a thin white college age woman, um, you know, how can we 
make those other groups feel like a part of our community more and hear their voices and make sure that they are being heard? Well, I, for us at Nita, a big piece of that is partnership. So it's about partnering with organizations and individuals who um, are are doing this work and in communities where we know that eating disorders, um, and again, it's all communities. We, we know eating disorders affect all communities, all ages, all races, all sizes, ethnicities, sexual orientation. I mean, the, these are not illnesses um, that match up with the, tradi the traditional or stereotypical picture. So that's a big piece of what we, we recognize that, you know, we need, we need to look at the language of how we're talking about eating disorders. And it's, it's also about, this is our community, right? It's not about like, how do we reach these folks? Like it's about, we're, we, we are all struggling with this. And we also need to recognize that our own privilege, I'm sitting here, as a white woman leading an organization, um, I've had a lot of privilege in, in my life and certainly in my recovery. Again, in a smaller body, um, no one ever questioned, you know, when I was eating a piece of pizza in my recovery, if that was a, you know, healthy thing. Um, and that's, that's not something that, you know, people in higher weight bodies, uh, can relate to because there's a lot of judgment, weight stigma is real, fat shaming is real. We have to confront these issues uh, as a community, um, as, a, as an eating disorders community. Uh, we also have to look at how um, you know, different communities are affected by eating disorders and might not relate to the terminology. So there are a lot, there's a lot of work that we need to do and I believe that partnering with organizations um, that are on the ground and doing this is really critical. Uh, Nita just recently partnered with the Trevor Project, which is a, a crisis line for LGBTQ youth. Um, we're really proud of that partnership. We did a survey of LGBTQ youth about eating disorder behavior. We know this is a population that is at especially high risk for eating disorders. So, you know, this is the kind of work that, that Nia is committed to doing. And um, it's it's critical, you know, we have we have to be talking about eating disorders in a, you know, in a broader way, and we have to be reaching um, everyone and um, promoting the idea that recovery, everyone deserves recovery. Yeah. And there's been a lot of work to do on the treatment access side of things. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do on the advocacy side of things, but I'm committed to that work and I'm really encouraged by um, the response from the community and the commitment of other colleagues to you know this this work. So yeah. And it's one thing I've always, yeah, and it's one thing I've always loved about Nita is that you're always on the front end of what what's happening in in this community and so i'm so thankful to hear that and i know that we will all in the recovery movement want to be a part of that and also look to look to your your leadership in in that um just want to point out sarah says also older people people um suffer yes. i'm going to put sarah's up on the screen she says also older people suffer i'm in recovery at 43 and i often don't hear much about people that do suffer with it at my age, and that's such a great point. Sarah, that is such an important point too. And, you know, again, when we talk about reaching all people and promoting the idea that uh, everyone deserves recovery, um, this is again, when we, when we think about the stereotypes and the picture that um, if you talk to someone who doesn't know that much about eating disorders, um, there is a, you know, there is a stereotypical picture that comes to mind and we have to, we have to bust those myths and we have to be really intentional about how we put forward different pictures and different stories. And um, that's, that's so, so important. So I appreciate Sarah's um, comments. And I think that's another really important thing that we need to tackle as a field. This isn't an illness that's, that just affects young people. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not just one. I mean, when we talk about eating disorders, there's a spectrum of, of behaviors. And um, I, I cannot tell you how often I hear from people through the Need a Helpline who say that they've waited to reach out for help or they didn't think that they were deserving because they, they thought they weren't sick enough or they didn't look look the part. Um, so we have to get over that um, barrier. And when I say we, I mean, as, a, as an organization and as a field, we have to be, um, we have to figure out ways to communicate that, you know, eating disorders affect everyone and everyone deserves help. Yeah, amen. Um, and I will tell you, when I traveled around the world, even in developing countries, like in the middle of Africa, little girls sitting there going like this, putting their uh, their their finger around their arm and, and a picture of Heidi mm-hmm. on their wall and telling me that they wanted to be thin. Um, and I, I will never, ever forget that moment and just going, wow. I'm in, the mid- I'm in a small village in Rwanda and this is happening. Um, so, oh my so, gosh, Kirsten, that is very... <laughs> it's, trust me, it's, it's yeah. disturbing. Um, and while of course the older generation of women would look at someone like you or me or anyone of, you know, anyone who's, who's in the West and is not living in a larger body, they would look at and say, what's wrong with you? You need to eat something, you know, like they'll be like, like we are strong like trees, you know, and they're so proud of, you know, their bodies, but the younger generation is growing up in a completely different culture and they're all affected by that. But at the same time, as you mentioned so rightly, it's not just the media influence, it's the way that people deal with stress or control mm-hmm. or a myriad of other socio-biological genetic factors that, that combined and, and for some people manifest in, in eating disorders, but it happens all over the world. Um, mm-hmm. Even, and, and the same, I with the UN women had some Muslim who were religious observance and they came up afterward and talked to me and you could tell that they were crying um, and they were very emotional and saying, can you please come and speak in the Middle East about this? Because you know, all of my friends struggle with bulimia and this is such a huge problem. And so, you know, so you think, oh, well, you're covered. You shouldn't have body image problems. But obviously, no, that, you know, that's what some people might think. But it just it 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 affects everyone. Yeah, it affects. It can affect anyone, you know, it, it can and it does. Uh, and that's something that we again, we need to talk about that. And. Um, in a in a way that really addresses the fact that the the complexity of of eating disorders and um, there the behavior is a, a way of coping. Um, there there are often connections to other mental health issues, um, you know, depression, anxiety, uh, trauma. I mean, the, that is something that you know I'm sure you've had guests who talked about that, um, but but there's a huge connection. Um, with past trauma and eating disorders, um, we see a lot of uh, uh, substance use, and uh, that's something that we also have to address as a community. That there are intersections, and um, we we've got to talk about that and be open about that, and um, that's part of the the conversation around relapse too. So it, there's yeah. there's a lot there, um, but. I, I always go back to the the idea that um, we have to hold on to hope, and there are so many. And I've been so fortunate in my life, and again, acknowledging the privilege that I've had in my recovery process. But uh, it's it it is what drives me, and what drives me in this work because I believe that recovery is possible, and um, I want others to to believe in that too. And that's really like the basic <laughs> underpinning of, of everything I do uh, at Nita. And uh, it's it, it, it's important to me personally. And it's of course become um, the the foundation of my, uh, my career. Yeah. Well, those are very good words to end on. Um, <laughs> Just do want to say, mention though, Terry is, is writing in and, and he says, great 
interview. I'm 62 uh, year old male who has struggled with anorexia and bulimia for many years. So yes, eating disorders can happen to older people too. And, and thank you, Terry, of course, for sharing your Thank you, Terry. And that's, see, that's, this is what it's all about. People being able to come together and share their experiences. And, um, you know, certainly there are things about Terry's experience that I might not relate to, but we have, we, we do share this connection and everyone knows someone who has struggled with an eating disorder. And um, that is, is so important and again another big driver they, this these are, are, are issues and illnesses that are so prevalent and we need to raise the profile of eating disorders we need to talk about them as a serious public health crisis but also one that is treatable and with resources and with advocacy and with a strong sense of community um, we can we can fight eating disorders. You know that's that's our our ultimate mission, a world or ultimate vision, a world without eating disorders. So um, it's a lofty goal, but uh, I'm very encouraged by the the community that that's here to um, to fight that with us. So absolutely, yeah. I totally agree. I'm encouraged all the time, and yes, there's a long way to go, but I know that. I know so many people in the field as, as you do, who are working hard on this kind of stuff every day that it's, it's just, I wish, I wish more people knew just how much is being achieved every day. So, um, so cool. Thank you, Claire, so much for coming on. So appreciate you. And why don't you, um, I, the website again, I'm going to put it up on the screen is national eating disorders.org. Right. Yes. And we have, we do have a helpline, which you can connect with directly through our website. Um, we have a toll-free number, which is 800-931-2237. Um, we also uh, have a connection through Facebook. So if for those of you who are on Facebook, who go to our Facebook page, we can actually interact uh, directly. Our, our helpline volunteers are available um, through uh, Facebook Messenger. So there are lots of ways to connect with us, and um, we encourage everyone to reach out if you need resources, if you need support. We, we are here. Amazing. Can you give us the helpline number one more time? I'm going to put it up here on the screen. It's 800. Sure. It's 800-931-2237. All right. So for those of you who are watching, perfect. We got the number up on the screen. 800-931-2237. Um, and that is an incredible resource if you just need someone to talk to. And I assume that's all confidential and yes, everything. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we can offer um, support, information, resources, connection to treatment options in your area. Amazing. So please do reach out and pass it along if you know someone who is um, in need of, of support and resources. Awesome. So cool. Claire, you rock. Thank you. Thank you. You rock. Uh, it's, so, it's so great to see you and talk to you. And um, I'm, I'm thrilled to have had this opportunity to connect with the community. And uh, thank you for all your yeah. good work. You too. Thank you for being a champion for this. I know you go into some crazy, crazy meetings and crazy places to make things happen. So, yeah. All of us. Um, so we are going to say goodbye to Claire. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. So, so much, Claire. Um, and then I'm just going to um, say goodbye to everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, Sarah again says, I wish we had some of this stuff in Australia. I do too, Sarah. Um, although, um, you know, obviously, thankfully, the internet is is all over the world. So go to the National Eating Disorders Association website, um, and you can find out for more great resources. Yes, we, there. we do have international resources um, we can connect to wherever you are in the world. We know um, of other organizations that do this kind of work. So please do reach out. Amazing. Cool. So she can connect you internationally as well. Um, Samantha also says thank you. And Jamie um, also says thank you all so much for this. I think that's a Southern y'all in there. You must be from yeah. the South. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Claire, so much. And thank all of you for watching. This was a really, really incredibly inspiring talk. And I'm super happy. Uh, 
Thank you all. We'll be back here next week on Tuesday for another episode of Weekly Hope. Uh, check on our Facebook page for the time and our guest. We're going to start promoting that on Monday. But um, we are going to make sure that this video lives at the top of our, our Facebook page for the rest of, of the week and into next week. So if you want to share with your friends um, Claire's inspirational message, you can absolutely do that. It's also going to be living on our YouTube channel as well. So, um, and of course, we try to post and help Nina promote whatever they're doing so you can um, always connect with them on social and make sure that you're sharing that very, very helpful information with anyone that you may know or love who may be struggling. So thank you. Wherever you are signing in from in the world, have a beautiful, blessed night and rest of your week. And we'll see you next week. Have a week. All right. Bye, everyone.